My name is Stefan Duma. I'm professor and department head of biomedical engineering here at Virginia Tech. Uh, we're in the Center for Injury Biomechanics right now where we test helmets primarily for football, uh, but we're also looking at other sports such as hockey and lacrosse uh, and baseball as we move forward. So in 2003, we started instrumenting the football players with six accelerometers that measure the head acceleration. Transmits that wirelessly to the sideline. We capture every single impact in practices and in games. We did this for the past eight years, and if you look at all of our programs, we have over a million head impacts we can analyze. So we know exactly how many times players are hit, what direction, and how hard. We use that information to develop the basis and the foundation for our helmet evaluation system. So we tested 10 adult helmets. We took each one and cut it in half, and you can see here the very different technologies that companies use, from a, a foam uh, to a buckling type system to a dash pot type system. Uh, there's a lot of very impressive engineering that goes into these helmets. So we developed the star system from zero stars to five stars, the five stars being the best. We ended up with one helmet, the five star rating, the Rydell Revolution Speed, we had a group of helmets in the four-star rating from manufacturers like Shutt, Zenith, uh, and Rydell, and all the four- and five-star helmets are very good. At the other end of the spectrum, we found the VSR4 only had one star, and the worst performing was the Adams, which we gave a not recommended. We don't recommend players wear those helmets. Both of those helmets are very old style and old design, and the fundamental contribution we want to make is that if you have one of these older helmets, you'd be very advantaged to move to one of the newer helmets. One of the interesting findings was that cost is not related to performance. Some of the most expensive helmets were the worst performing. Some of the least expensive helmets were the best performing. So if you go on our website, you can see all of this data. So you can see what the score of the helmet is as well as how much it costs. And I think that's one of the real values of this assessment is now consumers have another piece of information. Before it was all cost and appearance. And now you have some idea of the biomechanical response. Our plan is to do this on a yearly basis, and we'll update and modify our techniques with input from the manufacturers, so we'll plan to release another study in 2012, and this is because all the manufacturers create newer and better products. So there's new helmets that are coming out, we'll test all of them in January, February timeframe, and release in the early spring, so that the bulk of the purchases for high schools and, and colleges can be made in time for fall 2012 football. So we take no money from any manufacturer, even Rydell, even though we gave them the five star. Uh, we have no funding or income from the manufacturers, no royalties, and we have no royalties or income from the NFL. So we, we're a truly independent lab, and we just want to put this out there for consumers to use. One of the big questions is youth football. The helmets we've tested so far are adult. So they're high school, college, NFL. It's all the same adult helmet. But we're also very interested in what about the players that are six years old to 14 years before they go into high school. So this fall, we're starting the first program that's ever looked at youth football. We're going to instrument a team that's seven and eight years old, collect the head accelerations. And the ultimate idea is, how do you design a football helmet for a little kid? Probably a lot different than you would design it for an adult. But we don't know that data. So we have to collect the information, see how hard they hit, how often they hit, what directions they hit. And then we can use that to design better helmets. 